Can you guys guess where I am? It's a, it's a total mystery. Welcome to Portland. This wasn't a city on my bucket list of uh, travel destinations, I must admit. Um, but I'm here for a good reason. I'm here for a business retreat. And I landed in Portland last night, have I had the night in the city just on my own. And now I'm heading back to the airport to meet up with the other ladies in the retreat or who will be going on the retreat. And we're getting a shuttle out to Depot Bay, which I'm very excited about. It looks beautiful there. And I thought I'd bring you along because it's the first time I've done anything like this with a business retreat. And I'm always really fascinated by them. So I'm hoping you guys might find this interesting if you've ever wanted to know what people get up to on one of these retreats. So I'll try to take you behind the scenes and also hopefully we can see some sights of the Oregon coast. But for now, I've got to head to the airport and let's fingers crossed that I don't get lost. I shouldn't get lost because I'm just going back the way that I came yesterday, but who knows with me. I'm just very talented when it comes to getting lost in foreign countries. Actually, that's a lie because I'm really good at getting lost in my own country as well. agenda for the day officially starts now with breakfast and I was going to use the opportunity being like I'm at a retreat I should have like a really zen morning like get up early and do some yoga and journaling and like do yoga on the deck looking out at the beautiful view um, and then I slept in so that is the most Alan thing ever but I had a lovely sleep and I'm feeling really recharged just did a little bit of journaling and I'm gonna get my notebook and my laptop take it down for breakfast and then we dive into our first kind of teaching section of the day at 10 o'clock and guys i left my plug my converter my adapter from like new zealand plugs to us plugs at my last hotel so i can't use any of my hot iron tools on my hair and i just think it looks really kinky and weird now so i'm really frustrated because i've lugged a straightener and a curler all the way from new zealand in my suitcase no i can't use it so i'm wondering if i do a bun again, which, you know, defeats the whole purpose of my new haircut that I got last week for this. <laughs> or oh, whether I do a little clip. I think I should do a clip for a half up, half down. quickly just come out and chat about my day before everyone starts going to bed and I'll be like talking and yammering on and people can hear me through the walls <laughs> um but it's been the most incredible day I think I have been to so many in-person conferences but it's so different when you're spending like two days with people and like the way that you can get to know each other we're obviously a smaller group there's only 16 people here really get to know people's offers their businesses so in depth and we had the first half of the day was the workshop. So Alan was presenting and teaching, not me, Alan. <laughs> Alan Yen is who's hosting this retreat. I don't think I even mentioned that so far. Um, but she runs the Cubicle to CEO podcast, which is epic. You should definitely let, uh, check it out. I'll link it down below. But she did her teaching and her workshop, which is still super interactive, lots of like questions. Then we split off into little smaller groups and we workshopped ideas together. And then we came back together as a big group and we kind of workshop things on like a, a bigger level altogether. So I've come up with some really new cool strategies and, and how I'm gonna change my business. This whole retreat has been about partnerships and sponsorships, but like next level partnerships, like high level, high prices, juicy packages, dream brands, how to pitch to them, 
and I've learned so much and I can't wait to go home and implement it and I even had to drink a coffee today because I'm a little bit jet lagged but like I just didn't want to miss a single second of the value of what was being talked about and I hate coffee and I was like chugging it back and chasing it with a juice just to be like I need to soak up every moment that I can so I think I'm gonna head back downstairs now and get a cup of tea and just like chill out with the rest of um the lovely people here but yeah it's been a big day of talking big day of ideas and it's just like blown my mind it's just exceeded any expectation that i had for how a retreat works good morning it is day two of the retreat and this is actually like not our teaching day it was really like a shorter retreat which we were just talking about actually downstairs um and all of our teaching on was on day one and day two is basically when everyone leaves so i'm trying to make the most of like the free time did a little bit of journaling a little bit of brainstorm this morning and then just like networking and chatting with people it's really weird when i say like networking because i think it's like not the term you would think of like when you go to a conference and you network with people and you like hand them your business cards it's like a very different dynamic when you come to like an intimate retreat like this when there's a small group of people you're staying under one roof together um you just have conversations about like life like i had a really big chat with someone who's like moving to mexico with their family so that they can like have their baby and then also run their business and, and so you talk about like lots of like life things like that and it's really nice to connect with people or like you find another service provider and you chat about like the flaws in your business model and kind of like a deeper level of, of connection which is really nice and I think something that you do miss out on if you go to like shorter conferences and it's nice even though this has only been kind of like a two-day retreat we have managed to like pack in lots of that connection. So yeah, I'm gonna enjoy the rest of my day in Depot Bay and then I head back to the airport. Oh goodness. <laughs> oh no, I ran out of space. As you can probably tell by that, I never usually put my smoothie in a glass. I usually just drink it out of this to save on dishes, but I was trying to be all aesthetic and cute for the video. So I'm back in New Zealand and there's no cute aesthetic montage of me traveling back because I had some drama with my flight and almost missed it. My like car was organized basically at the wrong time and then there was really bad traffic. So I was cutting it real fine and it was very stressful. And then I had a really short connection in San Francisco for my next flight. And the stress of just sitting in a car in traffic for three hours before getting to the Portland airport was just very exhausting. Even though I made the flight and everything was fine, like the residual stress and anxiety. Whew, and it was just an exhausting trip. So I had this vision of as I was traveling home, sharing with you my little list of lessons from the retreat. And then of course I didn't do that. So I thought I'd share it with you now that I'm home and sort of reflect on some of the key things that I picked up on and the key takeaways for my business. I just bit into a lump of frozen strawberry. Woo! So this is a list of lessons from a retreat with six and seven figure business owners. And I did write this out and send it to my email list earlier. So if you want to be on that email list and get, you know, nice little newsletters like this and little snippets of my business, then you basically just need to download one of my freebies, which I have linked in the description box down below, and that will put you on my email list. But let's start with lesson one. And that was, if someone says no, find someone else who will say yes. This whole retreat I mentioned was about partnerships and pitching to brands for high ticket sponsorships slash partnerships. And throughout this entire process, not one person at the retreat asked a question around, oh, what if someone says no? Or what if like, I don't get any responses to my cold pitches or what if someone shoots down my idea, la la la. The only time I feel like we vaguely touched on that was when we were looking at negotiating skills. If someone didn't have a budget, what else you could do to make sure it was still like a financially good opportunity for you. But it was just such an interesting observation for me because I feel like in a lot of the, the rooms that I've been in the past, and maybe it's just a thing with like early stage business owners and maybe being 
a little less confident, but everybody's always worried about the nose and pitching going wrong. And I just love that in this room of very successful business owners, nobody, nobody discussed that, right? It wasn't like, oh, we're so scared someone's gonna say no. It's just like, let's just keep finding people, let's just keep going. And I feel like this attitude of like perseverance and just unshakable faith in yourself is something that we can all adopt. The next lesson was one around social media and the fact that your follow account does not define the success of your business. And what was really cool at this retreat was meeting a whole bunch of entrepreneurs who maybe when you looked at them on Instagram, they only had a thousand, two thousand, three thousand uh, Instagram followers, but behind the scenes in their business, they're making multiple six figures, high multiple six figures, and working with incredible clients and have amazing contacts in the industry. And I just, it just reminded me that there's so many other ways to successfully market your business. And I think that's what a lot of the people at this retreat were really doing. There were a few there that go to a lot of retreats, that go to a lot of conferences. So it's a good reminder, number one, that your social media following does not define your success or it doesn't put you in a box. You can still be successful even with a couple of hundred, a couple of thousand followers. But also the other lesson there is to get out there and start networking with. This brings me really nicely to lesson number three, which is getting out of your comfort zone. For me, flying to this retreat halfway across the world really was outside of my comfort zone. And it was really nice to see this, I guess this is more of like a personal lesson of observing myself, but it was really nice to see how much I gained from this retreat. And I felt like it was like a real reward for pushing myself outside my comfort zone because yes, it would have been more comfortable to not go on this retreat, to stay in my cozy little house and to not go to the other side of the world where I didn't know a single person going to this retreat. I didn't, like I'm a follower of Ellen who was hosting the retreat, but we weren't like friends or anything. I was just a fangirl. So I was just excited to be there. And to go all that way, to know no one, to throw myself in the deep end, I was super, super proud of myself. And I can't begin to explain how rewarding it was in terms of personal growth, but also just how much I learned. And I think about what would have happened or what I would be doing in my business now and the lack of clarity if I hadn't taken the plunge and gone on this retreat. Now, the theme of all of these lessons are very much things that I observed, not necessarily the topics that I learned because number one, that was information like from Ellen and her IP and you know her zone of genius and her specialty that I was learning from. So I don't wanna go regurgitate to you guys all of her knowledge and everything because that's hers to teach. And I'm obviously still learning. Like this is a whole new revenue stream for my business. I'm really planning and, and really getting excited about bringing on some partners for the Dishing Up Digital School because of this sort of training. So that kind of gives you a bit of an indication of where I'm going with. It's not just people sponsoring this YouTube channel, it's thinking of bigger industry partners and also looking at some sponsorships for events at McKinsey Studios. So that's kind of like the the like technical lessons I guess I took away from the program, but these lessons have all really been about like observations and just being there and what I learned. And the last lesson that is in that realm that I want to share lesson four is being supporters, not competitors. At this retreat, there were a lot of marketing experts. There was another person who ran a social media marketing agency. There were other marketing professionals and copywriters and technically a lot of these people were quote competition to me but i feel like when you start hanging out with some of these high level entrepreneurs words like competition just don't exist it's the same thing as lesson one with you know what if someone says no it's exactly the same here with competitors like it's just not in their vocabulary they don't think about those things it's all about collaboration working together and also understanding that each person there had their own unique point of view, their own unique world. So it wasn't like there, there was never this like jealousy or anything like that that came up. It was just like, oh, you do that. That's so awesome. I can relate to you on X, Y, and Z. There was so much talk of future collaborations that I could sort of work with on other people there, which was really exciting to be like, oh, hey, I heard you're launching this program. We should totally do something together or we should do a podcast interview together or like let's be an affiliate on this like it's just really nice to be in an environment like that and i think i don't know i guess it was something that surprised me a little bit but like 
I feel like I shouldn't be surprised because this is definitely my approach to business. I get a lot of, again, messages from new social media managers or new um, online business owners worried, constantly worried about their competition, constantly comparing themselves to others. And I think you do reach a point in business where not to say that completely disappears, but you definitely have a big mindset shift in terms of you know, owning your unique zone of genius, your unique view on the world, and just believing that you have value to bring to the table, even if someone else is doing a similar thing to you. It's so important to let go of that competitive mindset and instead turn into, oh, if she's doing that, that's just showing me what's possible for myself and my business. If there's other people out there succeeding in this world, then I can totally do that too. It's like showing you a possibility. It's not showing that there's no room for you or all of these other negative stories that your mind creates, which are totally untrue. So those are my four lessons. I know this vlog was like a little bit shorter, a little bit different, uh, but I hope you enjoyed coming behind the scenes with me regardless. I hope it was interesting for anyone else who's thinking about going on a business retreat. I was thinking about going to another one in October or November, but it's going to be too difficult timeline wise for me. Um, I'm going to the Kajabi conference in October and then this retreat was in Mexico in November. So it would have been like meaning I'd have to stay in the US for an extra two weeks and just financially that's quite a lot. And I also was like, I don't know that I want to be away from home for that long. So I have decided I think I'm going to pass on that and that's totally fine you know it's all about i think with these retreats because they are typically expensive and there's travel involved i think it's all about weighing up where the best opportunities are for you and your business and if it's financially worth it if you're going to get the roi and that's why this retreat with alan for me stood out so much because it had a very specific topic it wasn't just oh we're gonna go lounge on the beach and we're gonna like talk about cool things in our business and we're gonna grow and we're gonna network it was like let me teach you this new stream of revenue in your business that you can scale to you know six figures and you're like that is that is me that is where i'm gonna get my roi this offer really speaks to me so i definitely encourage you to look into retreats the material that you're going to be learning and all of those other inclusions like this one was really cool so we had all our food included and our accommodation and the price that i paid for my ticket so there were no like extra add-ons like it actually wasn't a super expensive trip for me once i'd like paid my ticket costs everything else was kind of included which was great but i hope you enjoyed this video make sure you subscribe for more entrepreneur diaries vlogs and other pieces of content if you have any requests drop them into the comments below and i'll catch you in the next video bye guys